Hey there, welcome back. Okay, so this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a while. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have said it. Tell me about your spice rack. <laughs> and a funny story about that. So when, we don't have a lot of people come here much because we live kind of out in the country. And whenever we have someone come over like uh, a construction worker or, um, I don't know, one of my husband's friends and they come in and they're doing something with the tractor or they're doing something like that. And they come in to use the restroom or something and they pass by here and they always say, they always make a comment and it's always guys. And so I'm always amazed how the guys are the ones that notice it. But they'll say something like, um, do you actually use that? Like, is that something that you actually use or is that for decoration? That's in summary, that's summarizing basically what they say and so but yeah so i thought i would show you and i was um my sister was asking me about it when she was here and i said yeah i mean it's real easy this is just a nine dollar ikea shelf and she said well how are they staggered up like that so i thought i would just break it down and show you what's going on there plus i have a new one that i need to add so i would i thought i would show you um, how I do the labeling on here as well. Okay, so you can see that I have a lot of different kinds of spices all the way down. And then I also wanted to leave room for on the shelf for the things that I use the most often. Uh, vanilla, balsamic vinegar, Allegro, and then I even have some of the flavorings. This is one of those spice racks that you can get at Walmart or Amazon or Target. Here's one level, there's one level, there's one level, and there's one level. So that's one, two, three, four. Four levels. It slides open back and forth. So it it stops. It's stopping right there. I'm not sure what the mechanism is that's making it stop. But you can extend it however far you want to go. Okay? So I have it where I want it. Okay. So... Um, the thing about the jars that I wanted to mention is I like the ones that are completely smooth. You'll have some sort of embossed glass on most jars, but they do sell them where they're just completely smooth. I think Anchor Hockey makes one. This one is a Kerr jar. You have ball jars, but I like to get the ones that are smooth. It doesn't matter to me which one I use as long as they're smooth. Um, so here is, this is a Kerr jar. So you can see it has some embossed raised lettering on there. Well, I wanna make sure that there's at least some place where I can put a label, okay? This is a ball jar and you can see it says ball right there, which is fine because I can still put a label right there, but the back side is completely smooth, okay? But what you don't wanna use is something like this. It's, it's completely quilted. There's not much room. There's a little bit of a space that's used for their proprietary label, I think, that's smooth right there. So I wanted the labels to look all very uniform and similar, okay? So what I did was I went down to Hobby Lobby and I got some stickers that are all the same. So here's the stickers that I found. I made sure that I got extra so, because I knew I wanted to add some things as I thought about them. But here's the other thing that I did. I went ahead and I found these. Let me put something white behind there so you can see. It has cinnamon, rosemary, mustard, parsley, cloves, pepper, cilantro, dill, salt, and a whole bunch of other ones. Cacao, chili, Cajun, barbecue. So if you make your own barbecue or you have your favorite barbecue, then you can just uh, empty it and put it in one of these jars. Okay. These labels here. And I have my little cheat labels where I don't have to write, which, you know, if you're like me, I'm one of those people that does not like the look of my own handwriting. So I'm just gonna peel that sticker off and I'm just going to put it on, try to center it as much as possible. I'm just gonna put it right there. Now I have my lemon sticker. So now I have my jar and I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it on the part where there's no writing, there's no embossing. And I'm just gonna try to get that as centered as possible. And I'm gonna put it right there. Now I have a lemon jar 
I'm still waiting for these, these lemon peels to dry out more. And then whenever they do, I'm gonna use this jar. But for right now, I'm just gonna set this one aside. Now, I do have some orange zest that I've already made, but I want one that says orange. Well, I don't have one of these. I don't have a sticker here that says orange. So I'm gonna have to make my own, which I know, again, if you're like anything like me, I do not like the look of my own handwriting, but you look at these at, as the whole, it's really not that evident. I mean, I have to give myself a little bit of grace. Like I know that I wrote that one that says cream of tartar and it's not the best handwriting, but I just say this to give you some confidence to do it yourself. But really, when you look at the whole thing, I mean, there's nothing that's really blaringly stand out. I'm saying this to people that are like me, that do, do not like the look of their own handwriting. There's fajita, there's crushed red pepper flakes. See, that, that one you can tell was the sticker. And then I've got uh, baking soda, baking powder. Uh, let's see. See, I have to look for it. That one's filet. That one seasoned salt, that one sea salt. So yes, you can tell, but on the whole, and nobody has looked at those and said, oh my gosh, you can really see there's a big difference between the, the stickers and your handwriting. Nanette, your handwriting is gross. It's terrible. It's, it's just, I can't believe you even did that. No, that's never happened. And when I look at it, cause I'm my own worst critic, right? When I look at it, I don't even say that. I'm just really glad that it's really accessible because this is my island. This is where I roll out my dough. This is where I put my, my recipes together. This is where I do everything. All I have to do is turn around and reach for something. Baking powder, baking soda, cumin, um, taco seasoning, whatever it is. I have it right here. Now, I wanna say one more thing. Yes, I know that spices are better kept in the cabinet. Well, we don't have a lot of space. And so the, the main thing that I wanna say here is your spice cabinet or wherever you keep your spices, it's a very personal thing because of the cabinets you have, because of the pantry you have, because of the space you have. And it really depends, I think too, on how serious a cook you are. Because if, you're, if you notice, you go into a commercial kitchen, they don't keep their spices in a pantry somewhere in the dark. Yes, light is not your friend when it comes to herbs and spices. Um, so they say to not keep it where sunlight can hit it. I have a window right there and it does come in and it, and it does hit this spice rack. But you know what? I use them so fast, I'm not that worried about it. Um, once I put them here, then I use them. That's where I use them. Now the other places where I keep the big jars where I've harvested, I just did a video on sage. Uh, where I harvest the leaves and I haven't ground them up yet, I do keep those in a dark, safe place. Like they're, they're not, the light is not hitting them. So, okay, that being said, the, the spice cabinet is such a personal space. And I wanted to tell you, one of the mistakes I made is I got these jars because that's what they had available. This is a half pint size. You can get a quarter pint size and you can see the difference so it depends on how much you actually use them I'm a half pint kind of girl <laughs> you can use them in quart sizes if you're a professional chef I'm not a professional chef I cook a lot but I'm not a professional I'm not making lots and lots of meals for other people but um, so you can tell the difference this is a pint this is this is a half pint this is a quarter pint I like the half pint size so this is also a half pint but it's shorter and squattier and it takes up more room on the shelf. But this is what I do. <laughs> I just practice on the back side of this sheet of paper, and I do use um, not a thick and not a thin Sharpie pen to make it match as closely as I can. Now, if you have a Cricut machine, if you're lucky and you have a Cricut machine, then you can just do that as well. <laughs> Make sure that you don't rub your labels on right when the ink is really wet, because depending on the type of pen, I've done this before, ask me how I know, <laughs> um, but I've done this before and it will smear. 
okay? If you're using a pen, just be careful and know that it needs to dry out a little bit. So now I have my orange peel. I'm just gonna, I, I didn't put orange peel. Um, I just put orange because I know what that is. Salt. Now, here's the other thing that I wanted to say. Don't feel guilty if you pour uh, another container, like when you're a little homemade spice jars, into one of these. I did not grow this. I did not grow my own sea salt, my pink Himalayan sea salt. I don't live in the Himalayas. <laughs> um, I did not, this is not my mustard seed that I grew. This is not my turmeric that I grew, but this is my oregano that I grew. Okay, so why did I even do this to begin with? Why not just use the bottles that come from the store. But there's no way that this is getting in there. Now, some things, and this was all born out of necessity, some things obviously you can just pour it into your tablespoon, but some things like cream of tartar, I can't. Especially if it comes in one of those little bitty shaker jars. So one of these little jars like this, I it's really hard to get just a quarter teaspoon because it has this little lid on it and I could take the lid off and I could do it that way. But a lot of times it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's so hard. <laughs> it was just hard, it was difficult. So I wanted something that I could put a tablespoon in. The other reason is because I wanted it to be handy. If it's handy, I wanted it to be uniform and I hardly, if I were buying spices, sometimes I buy them at my grocery store. Sometimes we buy them maybe at Costco. Sometimes we get them at a farmer's market. Sometimes I'm growing my own and I need something to put my stuff in. And I did try putting oregano in this little bitty jar. Well, I have so much oregano. I just thought, you know, a bigger jar. So this is the reason why I did this. Plus it's pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. And I had just had so many people ask me, how do you do that? So people that actually come here, like how is it staggered? You know, what kind of shelf? And I say, this is just a $9 Ikea shelf. And it has, and I guess I can show you that a little bit closer because you can buy Ikea stuff and get it in the mail even if you can't go to the store right now. It, it comes in three pieces. So this is one long piece right here. And I don't remember how many feet this is, but you're gonna need to measure, measure for your own kitchen if you wanted to do this anyway. This is the way that you hang it. You just, it has two, it has this piece right here, and then it has two screws right here. And then you slide this piece in here, and then you uh, put the other piece on right here, and you make sure it's level, and then you screw it in. And this is a two-person job for sure. This is definitely a more than one person job just because somebody needs to hold it up and make sure it's level and somebody needs to screw in the other side. <laughs> my my sister-in-law and my husband, we all kind of put all this together. So anyway, that's how I do my spices and I love it. Don't you think it's pretty? I think it's pretty. <laughs> all right. well. Don't forget to hit that little bell if you haven't done so already. That'll notify you whenever I put up a new video. You don't have to do that every time. You just do that once. And then don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And don't forget there's a little share button down here as well. You can share it with someone else that's really into it. If you're not going to, if you say, Nanette, I'm not going to the trouble to do all that. This is fine with me. I keep them in my pantry. But you know someone else who might be into it, then uh, you can share it with them as well. All right. Well, that'll do it for this one. Until next time, y'all stay safe out there. Bye for now. Orange. 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 Did I spell that right? <laughs>